Part 3 of the USS Nimitz CVN 68 uh, 1700 scale by Trumpeter built. And uh, I know I said I was going to be doing some painting, but I haven't got around to that yet. But I will be in this, this part of the series. Um, there's just one big, big problem I've come across. So if you watched the previous video, you would have seen that I had some issues with the photo etch not fitting. Um, yeah, and some of the pieces of photo etch just weren't right. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but there was uh, a point here where I got up into step two, where they were telling me that uh, one of the model parts, and here is H1, and D54, which were the kit part numbers, there is actually no sprue, the letter H, and there are no sprues, the letter D. So I'm like, what the hell's going on? There's H2 and H18 to make up this little platform, but there is no such sprue. So I went in and I found out that I've actually bought the wrong detail kit, the wrong Eddard photo etch detail kit for this model. I didn't know that there was another 1700 Trumpeter Nimitz. There's the USS Nimitz CVN 68, which is which is what I thought I had, and this is the etch a detail kit for the USS Nimitz CVN 68 That's it. I bought them both, bought the kit, bought this. Turns out that the USS Nimitz CVN 68 mine is 2005. Whereas this is just for the CVN 68. No date after it. So now what I've what I'm doing now is um, some of the stuff I can use. Okay, so I did manage, even though it's not, it's referring to parts that don't exist on sprues that don't exist sometimes. Um, but there was a point where this on, which was H2, which was actually in the kit on the sprue A5. <laughs> Um, and there's the photo etch for it, and that photo etch fits. Because I don't know exactly what the differences are between the 2005 Nimitz and what I'm assuming was an earlier CV N68 Nimitz, but there must have been some differences because I know that this little gun on the top here on this platform is different to the one they're talking about in here because the gun on that platform comes in three pieces and they've got some photo etch for it and it's a completely different looking gun this one in the kit is just one piece and I can't put any photo etch on it so disappointed but you know I mean I, I can't go and order the correct photo etch kit because they're out of stock I bought the last Nimitz um, ship and I bought the last Eddard detail kit and the way things are in the world at the moment with when it comes to getting things it could be halfway through this year before I, any more stock comes into this country so yeah so I'll have to just deal with what I've got so I will continue I'll make little adjustments where I can I'll use photo etch where I can um, if I can't I can't so um, we'll just come to these issues as I come to them. I am assuming that there's going to be not much difference between the two ships. So I'm hoping that a lot of this will work out, but there are some things in the, in here uh, just that don't relate to anything in the instructions. 
So anyway, live and learn. It's all inexperience, but I, I do think that sometimes the details of these kits, these Edard and MK1 kits and things like that, need to be a bit more clearly spelled out um, what they are for. Uh, in my previous build um, of the Arizona, I bought a detail MK1 detail kit for that, but not the full kit. There was one that was half the price that in, had all lots of photo etch and all that really great. And I would think, you would think that the basic photo etch kit, kit um, to upgrade would include the basic things on the ship. And that you would think would be the doors, the ladders, um, some of the, um, well, basically doors and ladders are a standard thing. You would think that the basic kit would come with that uh, on that Arizona. It didn't. And the trouble is, whatever website you go into, even the Eddard site or the MK1 site, it's very hard to go and see photographs on their site of the sprues so you can see exactly what you're getting. Um, if I'd had known and if I'd gone on and been able to see these instructions and gone, well, hang on, why is this talking about sprue, you know, um, the, this part H and and this other these other sprue numbers that aren't in the kit, I would have caught on and been able to go, well, hang on, that's not for my kit that I bought. Um, and anyway, I'll be wary in future when I buy products online to more than triple check that any aftermarket products I'm buying are actually for that particular kit I'm getting. Um, decks are another thing too. Uh, a lot of wooden decks you buy for kits. Some, uh, if for instance, the MK1 Designs has a wooden deck um, as that they make, but if you were to use scale, uh, one of the other Pontos or one of the other ones, even though it's for the same ship, some of the photo etch, if you're not using a Pontos photo etch detail kit, are not going to correspond to some of the markings on the deck that you that are supposed to be cut out and adjusted. So, I mean, I understand that these extra kits, um, detail kits in the way of decks and photo etch and that aren't for the amateur hobbyist. You know, people just go buy and build out of the box and that's fine. Um, but I consider myself an amateur moder moder model builder. Less than 12 months ago, I never built a model in my life. And already I'm in here building professional kits. Um, but obviously I do, I do, by looks of it, lack the knowledge of um, uh, going into the finer detail when buying these things and making sure I'm getting what I'm, what I'm supposed to be getting. Anyway, it was a bit discouraging. But either way, this ship will get built and life goes on. So, all right, so let's have a quick look here before I... I'm, I'm working on all the structures I can put on the outside here. So as much as I can go around and do, I'll do some. There's more to go on the outside here. I'll build all that up. When I get to a point where that's about all I can go, I'll... I'll be airbrushing this and all in the undercoat and base coating it all. I've got the deck of the hangar deck. That's ready to paint now, which I can do. I'm up to a section here where I'm doing all the walls inside the hangar bay, which I want to do a lighter grey to the external grey of the ship. So I'll... Um, I will take all these off the sprue. I will mark them all, um, put them on little stands, and I'll all spray them all individually so that when it comes to time to fit, they just go straight in on top of the painted hangar deck floor and everything's good. Um, and yeah, and while I'm working through, I'll just have to check and double check um, the photo etch as I'm fitting it. And if things don't fit, well, then I just go back to 
the basic kit parts and use them. Um, either way, we'll come out with a nice looking ship, I hope. All right, I'll be back shortly. Hello and welcome back. And uh, to show you where I'm at. Um, sorry, my bench is a bit of a mess. <laughs> I uh, I tend to box myself in with stuff all around me. I don't know why. I just need to spread things out, get some room, and I end up with all my tools that I've been using. Um, everything has its place, but not right in front of me. <laughs> anyway, so what I've done is I've been working on all the structures around the outside here. So as you can see, got these on. I've got some railings on here. There's a gun here. There's some railings on here. This back area here, I've got the railing on there. Uh, see that? That's... Just want to focus. Come on, focus, focus. Maybe I should clean the lens on the camera. Maybe it's got some dust on it. There you go. Um, same with inside there. There's railings on each of the um, hangar bay air exterior doorway areas there. Um, I've got the struts and braces on. I think we'll put on the side of here. I just got to be careful how I hold this because there's starting to be quite a few bits pieces sticking out. <laughs> so these little struts on here now uh, and supports for some of that superstructure uh, are all on. There's little pieces like this that are on there now, little platforms. I've got to be careful of. Uh, inside this area, I'll show you. Just find where I can hold that. Put that down. Is this little part there with a platform on it so again some railing um that's all good then uh over that there'll be a, a section here which goes over the top and fills that in so that'll sit on there somehow like that and then on that will be this will sit on there and then that whole piece will sit in the back here so because this is so small like this I will paint this separately once I put it together before I attach it onto here it's all going to be the gray that the rest of the ship is um, I know before I mentioned I was going to do the hangar deck floor and get that painted well here it is finally painted so i've done that in a mato uh, mato nato black um mato that that's an aussie slang for nato black <laughs> uh yeah so that that's done i've deliberately left it looking a little patchy there because i want it to look like it's been used so it's not going to be a perfectly black finish it's sort of a greyish black it's not a black black so like there's some black cardboard you can compare the difference there you see so if it was black it'd be more like that so so that's drying right now i painted that about half an hour to an hour ago now all the bits and pieces that'll go around that make up the walls of the hangar bay um i have yet to detach them from the sprue yet but um and when i do i will just lay them out in a sheet of foam for instance something like this and i'll put them on toothpicks or however i'm going to hold them in their positions that they'll be on the hangar deck floor so i'll know nothing's going to get mixed up and then i'll individually paint all those which i'm going to do a lighter gray which is the sky gray xf19 um, for the inside the hangar bay all right so um oh there's also that piece there which is pretty cool so this bit goes under the rear of the ship there uh, it's got some photo etch on it um i've got to 
so yeah it's going to go actually under that platform there so that will sit in under there um, on the ship itself that would be we'll have a look go back to this would be uh so there it is there it's that area under there okay so yes yeah, so i will continue uh working my way around in fact i might um start uh getting those hangar bay pieces all set up ready to at least get them undercoated and then possibly this afternoon paint them i know i say a lot of things that i plan to do and they don't eventuate because this is one of those kits where you know there, there's an order of doing things and it changes constantly so when you start to put a piece together and you start constructing um bits like this and then you realize well if i put that on the model now it's going to be awkward to paint so i'll leave that off the model and then you'll move on to something else and yeah it's it just keeps it interesting as well okay so um yeah i'll be back after i've put this together and i've done some more around the outside and hopefully painted the hangar bay some of the hangar bay walls all right back shortly hello welcome back i've got all my uh hangar bay walls all cut out i've left the marks uh the numbers from on the sprue pieces so i know which part is which but i've kept them in general order from port to stern uh, bow to stern um so it's just in an undercoat at the moment steinal res and thought i'd share a tip of what i'm going to do um because i'm spraying these an uh, xf 19 which is a a lighter gray than what the ship will be what i want is there's there's a lot of detail i'll show you for example one piece here so have a look at the detail there's some beautiful stuff with all the pipes and little boxes and you know all sorts of little markings along the wall there and what i want to do is i want to have those stand out a little bit i want a bit of shadow detail um, on those and so what i do is i have pencils here just your normal lead pencils and there's different grades of the darkness so you've got your we got we got um xb um there's another one there different levels of darkness so here's the one i'm going to use this one's a 8b it's an 8b pencil and the idea just move this aside for a sec is i'm not going to do it because i've just painted these so these need another hour or two to dry but the idea would be with the pencil just go along all the pipes all the little boxes all along just mark all along the side of them the little pipes going up into the top corner there just mark them all with the pencil and there's your shadow so you've darkened those areas so when you come along with the base coat and you do just light color of base coat you're going to just slightly see the shade the shadow and the detail under all those little pieces and they're just going to pop out a little bit more i mean if it, if it was larger you could do it with your air gun but, but for tiny little things like this this is the way to go i've even used pencils on um i made i built a uh, a submarine that showed the lines in the plating of the hull of the submarine and i go along with a dark pencil and i would have marked all the lines all the through all along the, uh, the hull of the submarine so when I put my coat over the top you'd see that shadow detail in there um, in the sign it's like doing a panel wash except this is under the paint so it's a little bit more I think uh, a bit more realistic than you know you put a wash over that and you end up um, changing the whole color of the whole thing if you use panel line well then if you're going to use a panel line um, 
uh, on this. It means you're going to have to clear coat this so it runs properly between. And then there's cleaning it up with thinners um, after you've done all that. It's just a lot of more mucking around, whereas just using a lead pencil, just go along there, draw it all in, just copy it all on top. Fantastic. Um, but any sort of shadow work in, in smaller detail, just a pencil. On this ship, there'll be um, there'll be areas where I might want to um, mark some of those guns that are on the side of the ship. Uh, again, nice sharp pencil, just get in there, mark in between the barrels and all the rest, and there you go. Put your light coat, base coat over the top, and you've got that detail. Anyway, so uh, just a little tip, a little trick that I use. It works for me. Um, I'll give these an hour is all they'll need um, and they'll be dry and then I'll go along with my pencil mark all those bits that I want to do just put all that detail in and then do the base code the XF19 and they will be ready to go uh, onto the floor of my hangar bay which is dry now so they'll all be able to go onto that um, but I may need to have this in the ship, in the hull, before I um, put anything on this. And the reason I haven't put anything that in the hull yet is because that has to be painted. So I think there's still some more stuff to go around the outside of this ship um, before I can actually paint the grey um xf 75 which is for the ship um or undercoat it uh, but we're getting there we're getting there uh the instructions which uh disappeared from me at the moment oh here we go uh there well i've just gone back to do all that hangar bay area um yeah, it looks like we're pretty close. There's there's lots of little pieces like the antennas that all go around the side of the ship and and a couple of little platforms and things. Um, but a lot of them go after the decks on or go on the deck before the decks put down. So and that's something we haven't dealt with yet. Um, going by this, yeah. I think I'm pretty close to having everything on there. Just this step five here, there's a few little structures to go on the outside of the hull. And then I'm pretty good to start undercoating the hull as well. So, progress is happening. Um, okay, we'll back shortly. Okay, welcome back. Um, I've got this um, hull here. At the point where there's nothing else I need to fit around the outside here um, so it's ready to paint um, we have a look at in more detail here you'll see so I've got all the photo which that I can get on there I've got some railings on here railings on here I've got all the brackets in for um, some of the other um, the platforms that will go on uh, all the back sections all done for the outside areas that are going to be need to be painted the um, the gray anyway so that's all done um, and of course I've got it stuck to a lid here so I can handle it while I'm doing this there's also railings which I don't know if that's accurate but there's railings across each entrance to the hangar here uh, which they can't be fixed railings like that because that just wouldn't make sense um, but that's what the instructions say um, I guess when the platform you know when this platform here lowers and they want to roll something out onto it to take up to the deck or something they want to bring down from the deck, that railing must fold down somehow. It has to fold down somehow. Um, yeah, strange. 
Okay. Um, so I'm happy to be able to undercoat this now. I'm going to go in and do all that. Um, all the hanger pieces that will go on the on the hanger deck floor, they're going to be painted as well. Um, so they're ready to paint the, the base color I want to do on, which is the lighter gray. So maybe uh, in this next video I might be able to show you this with some paint on it and with the floor inside uh, the hanger floor in place and uh, all the structures and walls for the hanger bay on it so um, as you know I've got the wrong um, Eddard detail kit for this so <clears throat> what I've managed to do is rather than putting some railings in certain spots I've left them out and then I've adjusted them so that I could put some railings on here it's it's strange because you would expect the Pontos kit to have sorry Pontos the Eddard kit to have the railings for all the platforms so we've got one two three four major platforms sticking out here yet the instructions only have railings for three of them this one this platform here there is no instructions to have any railings on it and that just makes no sense um, so I've made up the railings for that out of the platforms under here which you won't really see anyway because this is going to be a waterline model in a diorama. So I put the put them on there, but they completely left that out. There was no railings on that. The other one down this end, this piece is different shaped to the model that that photo etch is made for. It's actually a curved platform that comes out here like a U shape, and the railings for that U shape weren't enough to fill this whole piece here so that's where I had to also use a piece from underneath where the lifeboat is and add it onto that to make it so that it is long enough so I managed to do it anyway and it's come up it looks fine um, so you know there, there's been a lot of little adjustments some fit issues as well and things that I'm not impressed with when it comes to trumpeter um, this is my first 700 scale trumpeter model the last one was Flyhawk with the Scharnhorst um, but that lifeboat you can see that lifeboat under there well for one it looks really bad it, it's like an inflatable dinghy I'm sure it is but it just it just looks out of scale and it doesn't fit so once you put it on the lowering arms and and put them up well first of all the lowering arms themselves where the notch is cut out in the top here that it comes up through it's too big and it won't fit you have to trim that back and but not only that but the boat's too long so once it does fit up in the notches where it's supposed to go the the um the bow of the inflatable boat touches on the on the hull there it doesn't fit so you have to sand off the front of the ship um, about a millimeter or half a millimeter so that it will fit so strange um, yeah so that's that's a bit rough and the fact that it sticks out like that that's how it's supposed to be I there's so much more room for that to be hanging further in I don't see why that that would be the normal position for that boat to be hanging out so far um, it's almost at the point where it's ready it would be bored out to that point if it was ready to lower into the water um, maybe that was the intention um, but if it was stowed like it should be it definitely should be further back in there um, and I would assume I mean it just stands out it just doesn't look right but uh, it's okay it's 
that's the kit. Um, a few other little bits and pieces too. Um, some of these brackets that are going in as support beams, um, I'm guessing for the platform, or they'll go up and under, they'll connect under the deck. The pieces where they go into the hull, and there's a few of them around the outside, um, they don't fit. Um, you need to trim the little nubs that go into the holes in the side um, to get them to fit. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's about it. We'll call it a video there. And this is part three done. And um, part four is going to go into uh, getting the stuff painted, uh, getting this all painted up and putting in that floor of the of the hangar deck um, and we're getting part close to the instructions of um, starting work on the flight deck so there's another thing I'm going to need to put an undercoat on and um, we'll definitely be doing that in the next video okay so thanks for watching and putting up with my frustrations I'm having with this uh, I, get a, I guess I got a, off to a good, a bad start when I realised I had the wrong Eddard kit for this carrier. But I will persevere and make, make it happen. We'll get this. The end result, I want to be happy with, and that, that's all that matters. Okay, so thanks, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, hit the notifications bell there and get notified each time a upload comes. If you're just coming in on this one, Go back and watch the previous ones in this playlist and you'll see uh, from the un unboxing up to where we're at now. Uh, comment below, please. Uh, whatever you want to comment, throw it down the bottom there. And um, give us a thumbs up if you like the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye for now.